was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Radio Law Talk. I like that show. This is Radio Law Talk. So we're going to take you uh, state by state. We're not going to get in detail of every state, but talk about what the coronavirus is doing per state and what the the rules and regulations are. In a number of states, we're going to talk about probably Pennsylvania. We'll talk about Illinois, uh, Texas, Nevada, California. But let me let, let me go over a few things here. The first thing is, it's important to note that um, many, not all, but check your local jurisdictions. Uh, states, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get in detail of what my employees are saying, and Denise will get into uh, employees and how, during this coronavirus, what employers and employees should do, but one employee said, and I quote, um, I, you know, I'm going to follow the law and I'm not going to come into work, you know, and I said, okay, you know, I, it, w- what it is, is you cannot, basically, in, unless you're in a specific, different type of business that needs to be open and and it's and it's questionable lawyers and law firms Todd's a no-brainer because he's a criminal lawyer but I, I'm know, a no-brainer I, for several reasons yeah that's exactly right <laughs> but the thing like our law firm we get criminal cases that call in and by the way I say here's Todd Cunin one, one of the good and I'll send him over to Todd or someone else if I have to to get them help but they're calling into our firm we need to answer those phones mm-hmm. I got some phone calls I rolled over to my phone of people that were in serious accidents didn't know what to do. What do I do? My husband's in the trauma unit, and this is happening. The police are calling me. This is, what do I do? That is, to me, a critical part of staying open for business. So I don't think there's going to be any issue there. You have to kind of, you know, uh, you know, figure that out for yourself. Here's another example. Uh, there's an individual that called me that has. You know, uh, if you're hospital stores, you stay open because that's, you know, critical to running, you know, keeping people alive and and being able to feed them. Well, what about a company that does compactors that actually repairs all the big trash compactors and shredders and stuff at the hospitals and at the stores? I think, yeah, they got to stay open. Yeah, that's but essential. Here, but here's an example. So Gavin Newsom in California, who's the governor of California, did come out and say, you know, generally, he said, look, we're not going to enforce this. It's use your own common, ju- you know, judgment, and, and you need to basically socially be responsible. But people are worried about, oh, my gosh, they're going to go out and they're going to gather everybody up and throw everybody in jail. That ain't going to happen. I don't see that happening. There are rumors happened. about it, though. I know, but it's... I've, I've been hearing people passing around rumors that's about what one of my employees being stopped and yeah. on their way to court. And, yeah, you that's know. bull. You know, that's... That, so, so, just so you know, there's a lot of that hype, but but, but the the interesting thing is if, if you're arrested by going to work, uh, we want to represent you. And I can't say that over the... But, but find a lawyer to represent you. That'll be the most interesting case, you know, I think uh, in, in any state. But... But really, like Gavin Newsom in California said, look, it's it's a social responsibility for you to do this. Do I think that they're going to have martial law and make sure you can't show up to your job? And I'm not telling you to go and show up to your job. I, I don't think that that is that is a, an issue. But socially, they're asking you to do that. But but it depends. What is what is an important job? What what do you have to do? And we're going to list the different jobs that they're saying that you should. It's also pretty amazing how rapidly, by just by caveat, not by caveat, but by fiat, by judicial uh, legislative action, pardon me, that's not right, executive action, a large portion of people's lives quickly came under someone else's control. Right. And I think that's the concern. People get paranoid when they go, oh, if he can do that with a stroke of a pen, what else is, can he do? And he can do right. a lot. Right, right. Yeah, yeah well, all governors have that power. Exactly. At yeah, least right. most yeah. governors have no, that they power. Do. They yeah. do. I think yeah. in, in all of the states are kind of structured similar yes. in terms of having executive um, type of powers. And New York did not take the position that legal services were essential services. Really? They did not. What did they say? They they didn't they name it's it. Not, it's, it's just not. not on the list. But wow. California said some legal services right. are essential. And I think they re- related to constitutional issues. Well, the courts. So that the, would be criminal and could even be family law. Well, tell about the courts. What's closed down, Denise? Well, Contra Costa Court closed. 
period. No, not, not the criminal. They can't close the criminal department. Yeah. Okay, it was closed. I'm telling you. Well, let's put it this way. There's a Martinez. There's different courts. Yes, and it depends that which have court different you're functions. Right. That's so the story. the Spinelli, Spinelli, I think it is, in um, Martinez is that's closed. That's the Bay Area. Those people yeah, don't know that's done. near San Francisco. So, so one of the things to consider here when I talk about court, and I'll talk about it from the criminal law aspect. So, if a person is arrested, or they find themselves in custody or facing a trial, there are certain constitutional provisions that don't go away just because there's a coronavirus right. pandemic. Um, among those are the due process rights that you have. Your liberty is taken away from you when you're arrested and you have the right to due process. And in most states, for example, if you're arrested on a felony, right, uh, or even a misdemeanor and you're in custody, you have the right to be arraigned on that within 48 hours. If you are not, then you can be released in cu from custody. The case doesn't go away, but you can be released from custody pending your actual arraignment when you come back. Now, your liberty is not infringed. Um, another thing is if you are arrested for a felony and they do arraign you within 48 hours, will you have the right to have your preliminary hearing within a certain amount of time? And again, the and a speedy trial as well, it, right? Exactly. And the sanctions against the government, for example, for not getting your preliminary hearing in time would be not a dismissal of the case, but you are released from custody. So if, if you don't get your preliminary hearing within a certain amount of time, you can then be released from custody pending your preliminary hearing. The only time where it really comes up to you have to have something done or, and if it doesn't, your case could go away, is getting your trial within a specified period of time. Now, let's remember that in the Constitution, all it says is that the accused shall have the right to a speedy trial. They don't put a number of days on that. Now, every state has gone in and put in a number of days that for purposes of that state, this is what a speedy trial means. In California, it's 60 days in a felony. Uh, in a misdemeanor, it's either 30 or 45, depending on when you, whether you were in custody or out of custody at the time of arraignment. Um, it's within 30 days if you waive time and then pull it. There's a whole bunch of different things, but the state's determination of the time frame is code, but the Constitution doesn't have that. So if there's ever a question about whether or not a case should or should not have been dismissed, one of the things that we could see coming up is at some point in time an appeal before a California Supreme Court or a state Supreme Court or the U.S. Supreme Court about which controls the more ambiguous federal standard of speedy trial or the state standard of it has to be within X number of days. And this coronavirus is going to possibly provide the framework for that question to be better answered uh, by appellate courts. Well, you know, yeah, and and uh, for the family law context, we still have courts open. Maybe maybe not the family law courts, because down in Sacramento, it's the Ninth Street Court that's open, um, and we we have ex partes on custody issues. Right. Um, because that's emergency. Sometimes. That is emergency. And then we have domestic violence restraining orders, which is also a priority case. So custody and domestic violence is still going on in the context of family so law. So most states are generally keeping open the criminal uh, essential divisions of the courts open. But, you know, what that definition is, well, let, here's Illinois as an example. Illinois as an example. It's, there, a lot of these directives from the governors, which they have the right to do, and so does the President of the United States nationally, and the governors do in most states under their state constitution, and we're going to get into what they can and can't do later, but um, and some examples of in history of martial law getting more extreme. But in Illinois, they keep it kind of general, and they're doing that on purpose. It's more of a, uh, you know, a, a, as a good citizen, you need to follow this. There they say the directive says in Illinois, non-essential business and operations must cease. A requirement may be that exceptions, non-essential businesses can still allow employees to work remotely and process payroll and employee benefits, among other limited activities. Gathering of more than 10 people are prohibited with limited exceptions. All places of public amusement are closed. The public, such as carnivals, amusement parks, 
and concert halls. But see, everything's with limited exceptions. With exception, I mean, that's going to be so broad. Good luck in trying to force someone's when they can argue. Well, well, I think this is critical. I mean, I mean, is this critical or not? When I'm answering phones, and believe me, I rolled the phones to my cell to my law firm. Oh my gosh, what a freaking disaster. I mean, disaster. I said, I couldn't keep up with it. It was like everyone was calling, had issues that they needed help with. As lawyers, they needed, you know, but you got Radio Law Talk. You don't need anyone else, right? Go to the website, radiolawtalk.com. That's radiolawtalk.com.